Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 25, uh, which is sewing. Uh, so in this discourse, basically, uh, Buddha was staying in the Jetta's Grove, uh, Anatha Pindika Monastery, uh, where Buddha had actually given a kind of a simile of a sower, that means a person who is sowing the seeds and the deer, right? who uh, get trapped in that seed, in that, you know, plan of the uh, sewer, right? So he has like, he gave this situation, a uh, simile where, you know, a four different situations were there, right? So, basically, who is the sewer? Uh, sewer, the person who puts that bait, you know, for the deer and, you know, catch that deer was the Mara, the wicked, right? The Mara, the wicked, the personification of evil. A sower and the uh, deer are basically people like us, the you know, mendicants. This is basically addressed to mendicants, but basically people who are following the path, who are following the spiritual path, right? So, basically, how this uh, you know, it is structured is that uh, uh, that the sower, you know, who sows the seeds is not thinking that the deer will you know enjoy and everything and they will relish and have uh, their meal and everything, right. Uh, from the seeds. No, their task, they want to capture the deer and then they can do with the deer whatever they want to. Right? So that's their plan. So now there are four groups of, four herds of deer. They, every, every all the four herds of deer had different approaches. Right? So first herd of deer, wherever the seeds were sown, they directly went there. They become, they indulgent, negligent and they, uh, uh, they were caught. That is the first herd. Right? Second herd of the deer thought, you know, the first herd, so they watched the first herd of the deer, you know, they became indulgent and everything. So they said, why don't we avoid eating the, uh, the seeds altogether, right? So they, they did not eat the seeds. They become very weak and they did not eat the seeds. And then wherever they were, there the grass and the rain, water and everything was empty. So they had to return back to the seeds. And then when they reached to the seeds, their game was over. The, the sower, you know caught them. So that thing also didn't work. Third deer thought of a plan that why don't we set up our uh, kind of a, a dwelling, you know, uh, cl uh, close by to the place where the sower has sown the seed. Then at whenever you want, we can encroach the particular place, enjoy without being reckless. Uh, so then the sower and the helpers thought that, you know, this is like some intelligent, intelligent herd. So they basically surrounded the seed on all sides by, you know, stocking up the uh, high nets. And then what happened is that the third herd of the deer also, you know, uh, kind of get caught. So then the fourth herd of the deer thought of a plan that uh, we will set up a dwelling somewhere where the sowers and the helpers cannot go, right? Where they cannot, you know, put up the high nets. We will live, we'll live there and from time to time we will come and uh, have the seed and that is the fourth herd of the deer to whom Mara said that uh, if I disturb them then they will disturb other herds and uh, you know it will all create problems so we just keep an eye on the fourth herd we cannot do anything on them so this is basically now Buddha is drawing a simile here that the seed is the five kinds of sensual stimulation so we are surrounded with all kinds of sensual stimulation so the seed is this sensual stimulation Sower is the term for Mara. Sowers, helpers are the term for the Mara's assembly, all the helpers of Mara. Deer is the term for ascetics and Brahmins. Right? So the first group of ascetic who just went ahead and indulged is like they are like reckless people who they just saw the sensual stimulations and they just got indulged and they got caught. Second group of ascetics who tried to avoid the seed, avoid the sensual stimulations totally, you know, that approach was also did not work. Right, because uh, it's like you know practicing austerities, you know fasting, too much fasting, very extreme kind of practice. That doesn't work because then, you know, at one point then you'll have to leave everything together and come back to the thing. That's why Buddha's path was the middle path. That you know, not too much on the sensual pleasure side, not too much on the extreme austerities and everything. Right. So then the third, third, third is uh, the were, were these people. Third herd was like people who had wrong views. Wrong views, what, what are the wrong views? That this cosmos is internal or this cosmos is finite 
or the soul and the body are one thing or the soul and the body are different things you know they have all these kind of views wrong views right so these are the this is how the third group of ascetics and brahmins fail to get free from mara's power then there is the fourth group of ascetics right now what is the fourth group of ascetics do do and what did they do so that the maras and the assembly cannot go to them the buddha said it's a mendicant quite secluded from sensual pleasures secluded from unskillful qualities enters and remains in the first absorption so basically here buddha is talking about the all four absorptions four jhanas first absorption second absorption third absorption fourth absorption he goes totally beyond the perceptions of form and everything right it's a bit complicated as a lay people right um, but then they are the people would would the said the mara cannot touch right they have like they are free from the you know clutches of the mara so now what my little uh, learning uh, kind of from this discourse is as a lay people now see what our what we are trying to do is is that uh we are trying to just gather whatever we as a uh, you know lay people can take away from this discourse right is that first is that do not do austerities do not do extreme practices follow a middle path have a routine have a daily routine of meditation eat balanced food right eat moderation have a moderation in food but don't do too much fasting and everything that is first thing second don't have wrong views right do not like get stuck get attached to wrong views even like if you you know even attachment to anything gives suffering that is what buddha said in the noble truths right the craving the attachment to even ideas so we do not even attach ourselves to any wrong views we what buddha said keep observing the mind body feelings objects of the mind and then the truth the truth will emerge itself so rather than attaching to any wrong views we just become agnostic for example is god there or not there buddha said do not think about these questions just do your own practice and you will find the answer right so we do not get attached to any wrong views then we practice the noble eightfold path right we do our noble eightfold path we as part of the noble eightfold path we do our daily inside meditation and we try to seclude ourselves from all the unskillful qualities develop right qualities which is all basically the noble eightfold path so our task is as a lay people is to follow the five precepts be on the noble eightfold path and uh, just continue on that path till we continue on that path mara cannot touch us right and then we can always come whenever we feel doubt fear etc something arising we can all take the three refuges that we can just sit quietly and just take the refuge i seek refuge in the buddha i seek refuge in the dhamma i seek refuge in the sangha and say it three times this is our refuge this is our refuge in the triple gems triple jewels right so this is a bit of what i could gather from this discourse it's mainly for the mendicants but it has some pointers for us do please check uh, the discourse the link for the full discourse is given in the description please do read get your own insights and do share your takeaway in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo